Hi, it's Dwyer. It is the day after Christmas, Sunday, December 26, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, on my YouTube page, right, and it's youtube.com slash my name, D-W-Y-E-R 70905. They have a category of documents, uh, excuse me, of videos that you can favorite, right? Not that this video is anything I like, but it's in my favorites folder. And it's the car crash involving Errol Spence, right, where he crashes his Ferrari. Now understand, that car crash took place October 10th, 2019. Right, again, October 10th, 2019. Errol Spence came back. He fought Danny Garcia. And he beat Danny Garcia. Right, now let's be blunt. An argument can be made that Danny Garcia is no longer Danny Garcia. But Errol Spence beat him, right? Retained his titles at 147. Then, of course, later, Errol Spence had retinal surgery, right? For a boxer, few things are as precious as their eyes, right? Errol Spence had major eye surgery, understand? Torn retinas have ended many careers in boxing. Leotis Martin, the guy who beat Sonny Liston, Sonny's last loss, never fought again because he suffered retinal damage in that fight. Now I understand, we, the public, are being told different versions of the extent of Errol Spence's retinal problems. I need four boxing historian types here to understand that when Harry Greb died, great fighter, they found out he was blind in one eye. It was after Joe Fraser retired that we got the truth about the thriller in Manila. We found out that Joe Fraser entered that fight blind in one eye. In fact, he had been blind in one eye for a long time. The reason Jack can't cook was unable to have Ali fight Joe Fraser in California. And understand, Jack Gang Cook owned the Lakers, right? Could have had it at the fabulous forum. Was because insiders understood that Joe Fraser might not pass a eye exam in California. Joe Fraser himself, before he died, claimed that they had a doctor who helped them pass the New York eye exams. In boxing, and let's remember, this is the sport of Antonio Margarita, where he had eye problems and then got a boxing license to continue when everyone was concerned about the eye. Just understand, in boxing, people do what's necessary to get in the ring. As with Joe Fraser, we're not going to find out the truth about Errol the Truth Spence's eye damage until years from now. What we do know is that he had retinal surgery. Right, folks? If your eyes are fine, you don't have anything like that done. Right, let me also say, too, everyone who has eye problems will, of course, say, oh, my eyes felt fine right before this exam, right? I need for you to look at the film of Errol Spence's car crash. I don't think we know with certainty how long Errol Spence has had retinal problems, right? I'm just here speculating because if I'm going to bet on a fight, well, the risk is on me, isn't it? I'm here speculating that Spence might have had spotty vision for some time. Understand the way these things operate is 
you're in some catastrophic, and that's what his car accident was. You're in some catastrophic car accident. And then, of course, you know, you notice that your vision sometimes blurs or that objects sometimes come across your vision, right? It looks like a fold in your vision and you don't know what it is. And then you think to yourself, oh, I must be tired. Maybe I slept on the eye wrong. That's what Kirby Puckett, Baseball Hall of Famer, thought before he was diagnosed with glaucoma, right? That wasn't retinal, that was literally a disease. Well, here, Errol Spence might not have realized the seriousness of his eye injury until he goes in for the physical before his fight with Manny Pacquiao. Now, maybe like Joe Fraser, he was hoping that the doctor would be friendly and, you know, he'd slip through the physical. But th these are the 2020s. Right? Errol Spence was flagged. They looked at his eye and, of course... He needed retinal surgery. Now, where you make money is in the gap between what the public thinks and what's really going on. Many in the public feel that this is like having a headache, right? Oh, the doctor will just go in there. Didn't we see several fighters? Ray Leonard, for example. You know, Abner Maris come back from retinal problems and, oh, this must be like fixing an ACL. Uh, where football players come back or basketball players come back. We're fixing an Achilles, right? Because, of course, we saw Kevin Durant come back, right? What we don't see are the guys who don't make it back from those injuries. So, Errol Spence is about to fight your Dennis Ugas. Right? A defensive wizard. A guy who just beat a Southpaw, Manny Pacquiao. Right? A Southpaw who, you know, is very similar to Errol Spence. Right? Southpaws who can come in and rough you up, who have big punches, where you have to look for that left hand. Ugas has handled Southpaws. Right? So, let's focus a little bit more on Errol Spence. Errol Spence is 31. Errol Spence turns 32 in March of next year. Right? March, just four months from now. Let's also look at Errol Spence closely. You know, when Ugas was in the amateurs, he was a lightweight, not a welterweight. Think about yourself, think about the people you know, think about your family, ask yourself the question, do people gain weight over time? Let's talk about some elite professional athletes in Errol Spence's vocation, boxing, right? I want you to focus on Canelo. Has he gained weight over time? Keeping in mind that Errol Spence is taller than Canelo. Right? Spence, a welterweight, is taller than Saul Alvarez, who, of course, has beaten the light heavyweight champion, Kovalev. Right? Think about Floyd Mayweather, freak athlete when he was younger. Right? Great athlete, always in shape. You never saw Floyd. Never. In a fight where he was out of shape. Never. Right? Floyd Mayweather gained weight over time. That's how Floyd picks up all the titles. Because he's in different weight classes. He even goes up to 154 and beats Oscar De La Hoya. By the way, Floyd Mayweather, shorter than Errol Spence. Think about Manny Pacquiao, here again, spectacular freak athlete. You never saw Manny Pacquiao out of shape in a fight, right? These are guys with no body fat. Manny Pacquiao was the guy who, the weigh-in was academic because Manny would weigh one or two pounds below the weight limit, 
right? Manny's not sweating to make 147. He would come in at times 144 for a 147 fight, right? Manny Pacquiao gained weight over time. People in their 20s, I'm just telling you, your metabolism slows down a little bit. And even for great athletes in the sport of boxing, many of them will gain weight over time. Right? Canelo is known as a gym rat. Right? Canelo is a guy who's in the gym. This isn't Roberto Duran or Ricky Hatton. Right, where you're at the club and you say, hey, isn't that Ricky Hatton over there? And he's a man of the people when he doesn't have a fight schedule. No, Canelo is a guy who's disciplined. Think of the weight he has gained. Now, Errol Spence was a spectacular amateur. Right, understand this is a three-time winner of the U.S. National Championships as an amateur. Right, he wins in 2009. He wins in 2010. He wins in 2011. This is Errol Spence before we knew of Errol Spence, the professional prize fighter, the future Hall of Famer, the still champion. But here's what troubles me. Spence is 5'10". He was fighting at welterweight in 2009-2011. 2010, 2011, right? This is a guy who's still at welter, folks. You starve your body. Sooner or later, your body starts starving you. When I see an Errol Spence, and he's very successful, as I said, I believe he's all a favor. He's unbeaten as I make this video, right? Big time amateur career, big time pro career. Right, big time. But wow, I don't like the idea that he's still fighting in the same weight class. Right? I mean, you have a lot of guys in the sport who struggle to stay in a weight class for too long, and then, of course, their body starts starving them. Right? Things start to fall apart. Well, let me say this. Errol Spence has 21 knockouts in 27 fights. Only six of his fights have gone the distance. Would it shock you to learn that half of them, three of the six times Spence has been forced to go the distance, have happened in his last three fights, right? The public thinks Spence is still blowing away opponents like he blew away Cal Brook. That's not the case, folks. He's on the wrong side of 30. He's still in the same weight class he was more than 10 years ago. He's still at the same weight class he was in 2009 and now he's not stopping guys let me just say this now in terms of public perception and what I personally think and Spence has proven me wrong before I thought Mikey Garcia was gonna beat him let me own that right but here's what I think today right after car crash. That's horrific. After retinal surgery. Right? Here's what I think today. I'm not convinced that current Errol Spence is the same as old Errol Spence. In other words, we might be past peak Errol Spence. Danny Garcia's last opponent in some interviews talked about how after fighting Spence, he didn't think, this is from in-ring experience, he didn't think that Errol Spence was all the way back. Right? The assumption is that Errol Spence is going to come all the way back. 
Of course, the Danny fight happened before the retinal surgery. Let me say this. Because of Styles, I do believe Spence, who has a much more complete game than I gave him credit for before the Mikey Garcia fight. I do feel that Spence has a path to victory over Ugas. But it would require him to be on his back foot. I believe Ugas's defensive construct gives Ugas the upper hand when someone, even a slick southpaw like Manny Pacquiao, is trying to crash the pocket on him. Right? I believe what you want to do is you want to force Ugas to be the aggressor. You need to be on your back foot. You need to have it where your jab is keeping Ugas outside. Ugas isn't able to counter you to the body because you're not crashing the pocket. You're forcing Ugas to come find you. Because Spence is 5'10", with reach, with a jab, with a back foot game, I believe Primarily Spence would be able to pull it off. But, in my opinion, this is controversial. Much of what I say is just one man's opinion here. In my opinion, having a back foot is harder than having a front foot. Right? I know that's not how people think about it. You look at a guy dancing, a uh, Ali, another heavyweight I'll name, a uh, Larry Donald. You see these guys outside moving away from guys, and it looks like they don't want to engage. Right? It, it, it looks like it takes more courage and more skill to actually be a front foot Rocky Marciano type guy. I believe it's just the opposite. Right? Back foot guys need to know what's in back of them. They need to know spacing. They need to make sure they're not backing up into the ropes. Right? These guys, while countering you, need to be able to throw enough volume where they can win the round on the scorecard. Right? They're shooting a jab, forcing you to walk into a jab while they're backing up. I believe all of those type of skills require a fighter, especially against an elite fighter like Ugas. Right? Let's remember, Ugas beat Manny Pacquiao. He has a share of the title at 147. Let's remember, too, he goes into the Pacquiao fight with a share of the title. We can claim sanctioning body shenanigans and stuff like that. Just understand, this isn't a one-off fighter. Right? This is a guy who knocks down Sean Porter late. Right? This is a guy who, in my opinion, beat Sean Porter, certainly takes over that fight in the second half. Right? This is a guy who's fought Sean Porter and Manny Pacquiao. Well, and of course, who was an Olympian himself. Right? I don't have the confidence. Maybe many of you do. But I don't have the confidence that this Errol Spence is the Errol Spence we've known. And that this Errol Spence is going to be enough at the top of his game to actually pull off a back foot masterpiece against Ugas. I also think, too, that sparring is different than a real match. Right? That you're haunted by your injuries. Now, some fighters have pulled it off, right? Ray Leonard, repaired eye, comes close against Marvin Hagler, close enough where he gets awarded the victory. Rebuilt eye. It's happened, right? But let's remember, Ray Leonard is backing up for a lot of that fight. Right? Ray's not the one 
crashing the pocket in that fight. He's the one getting hit with body shots in that fight. Right? Leonard had great legs. Ray's the guy dancing in that fight. That's the kind of thing that Errol Spence, who has not stopped anybody in his last three fights, would have to do against Ugas. Let me say this too. I know Ugas is older than Spence. Ugas is 35. But Ugas's game is going to age well. Because defensive fighters don't get hit that much. Right? The defensive guy isn't relying on reflexes. Right? When he has the kind of defense that an Ugas has. Right? Ugas isn't one of these high flyers who's just leaning back and the punch ends here. Right? No, Ugas is a guy who has hands up. Look at it. He's relying more on placement and form, more than reflexes. So the bet I like here, because Errol Spence has been a great fighter, because I believe the betting line is going to reflect Errol Spence's immense popularity, the fact that Errol Spence has been champion for years, the fact that people don't really know who Ugas is, the fact that people somehow think that Manny Pacquiao, who today, as I make this video, I'm convinced still has some of the fastest hands in all of boxing, right? People are so blinded by age, the fact that Pacquiao's in his 40s, that folks seem to believe that Ugas got lucky because he was fighting an old man, right? Pacquiao fought a great fight, folks. But style-wise, Pacquiao needs to come forward, needs to be on his front foot, needs to be offensive, right? He's a thrower, and he was fighting Ugas, negative energy, a catcher who wants you to hunt him, who wants you to try to crash the pocket, right? People don't give Ugas the respect for the victory over Manny Pacquiao that I believe he deserves, right? Because Pacquiao retired. We all have to retire at some time, right, in boxing. Pacquiao still is a better athlete, in my opinion, than 95% of the sport. So the way I'm playing this, as long as the line allows, right, and I'm waiting for my casino to post this is I'm going to take the over because Spence's last three fights have all gone the distance and I believe Spence right who only fought one of those three fights after the car crash is getting older because that's what happens we all age I don't believe Spence is still peak Spence. I think he's in a little bit of decline. Sorry, folks, when I hear about retinal surgery, that raises my doubts. I'm expecting the over, and I'll hedge to play with the underdog to win by stoppage. Understand. To get a stoppage, he doesn't have to blow Spence out during a round. He just has to land enough shots where Spence starts thinking to himself, I know my eye's not 100%. This eye has been damaged before. I'm here sensing that I can't do what I used to do in the ring. My power isn't the same as when I fought Kell Brook. Right? Tonight's not my night. I'm going to tell the ref between rounds that I can't continue. Right? Understand, too, the way fights operate. Let's remember the ending of the thriller in Manila. Joe Fraser has one eye blown up, right? Ali is blown up, has closed one of Joe Fraser's eyes. Joe Fraser is Eddie Futch, legendary cornerman, in his corner, right? Eddie's not squeamish. 
Eddie's one of the most experienced cornermen there was. Right? But Eddie and Joe had a secret that they knew. It was that Joe only had one good eye. And that was the eye that was closed. Joe was blind. He was operating off shadows against Ali. Look at the next to last round. So, of course, Eddie Fudge pulls the plug. Doesn't allow Joe to come out for the last round. Think about that. Well, here, I believe Errol Spence and his corner have some secrets. Right? Ugas is a master counterpuncher. Maybe Spence comes out and says, let me try to impose myself on Ugas. He's going to find that he can't. So then he decides, okay, let me go back foot on Ugas. Then he's going to realize that there's ring rust. His last fight was December of 2020. Folks, his fight against Ugas is going to be in 2022. Let's just say he hasn't fought a Manny Pacquiao recently like Ugas has. Right? Think about that. So, I think there's a huge chance that an upset happens in this fight. I'm going to cover myself by just taking the over. If this fight goes the same way as Spence's last three fights, cha-ching, I'll cash the ticket. If Spence comes out, isn't quite the same. Right? is on his back foot, but this isn't the Spence who beat Mikey Garcia in really a career masterpiece. Right? Let's say, let's say Spence comes out, he's on his back foot, and of course the vision's not quite the same. The timing is not quite the same because he's been out of the ring. Because he's had surgery. Right? Understand, because of the retinal surgery. It's not like the guy was able to live in the gym between fights sparring. Right? That didn't happen. So I think Spence is going to have problems here. I like the over. Hedged with the underdog. Simply to win. If Ugas wins a decision, I win both halves of the bet. If Ugas closes the show before the over, I'll get leverage because he's the underdog. But understand the risk involved. If Errol Spence, for the first time in a few fights, comes out and is able to stop Ugas inside of the distance, inside of the over, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also say, too, that I understand many disagree with me. I'm just giving you my take. Right? I do believe a back foot is harder than a front foot. Right? Let me point out that when Tyson Fury, heavyweight champion, starts to have trouble in fights, he gives up on the back foot. He knows that's too hard, right? Move away from a guy, but land enough shots to win the round, right? Deal with the guys bobbing and weaving while being outside the pocket. He'll give up on a back foot, and he'll just come in on a front foot, right? Well, I'm just telling you, if you're rusty, if you don't know where you are in the ring, if your vision perception, depth perception, isn't quite right, if you're unable to read cues, you won't be able to pull off a back foot for 12 rounds against an Ugas. Right? When Spence fought Mikey Garcia, Spence was fighting regularly. Spence hadn't been in a car crash. Right? Spence was Spence. Is he still? I have my doubts. I like the over hedged with the underdog simply to win. Let me hear from you in the comment section. Thanks for stopping by.